Hello, precious one. Merry Christmas and uh, season's greetings to you and your family, from mine to yours, and from the UIO family as well. And I'm happy that God has given us opportunity, irrespective of coronavirus and our inability to meet together, to still continue with camp and be a blessing to you. Today, we have a talk, and then we're talking about an all-important topic, prayer. And it is a good time to pause and say a word of prayer. Lord Almighty, we thank you for how you have brought us through this year. We pray that as we go through this session, we will not be distracted, but we'll pick up irrespective of the distance, all the anointing and the impartation that we need to make it as Christians until you come. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. We just prayed. And then we're hoping that God would answer. But we want to ask ourselves the question, is God serious about prayer at all? So that's the topic we are treating today. Is God serious about persistence in prayer? And we would say that, what did God do about prayer? Um, where is the origination of prayer? Um... So we'll go through the scriptures, but I would want to share that why would God want us to pray anyway? Because he knows everything. He, he knows our needs, so he should just go ahead and then just do them. Instead of giving us that trouble of having to pray. And you know, it doesn't come that easily. It, it takes quite some discipline and sometimes we say we are going to pray, we are going to pray, but... We hardly do, and uh, then prayer meetings are sometimes the least attended meetings, and even the times for ourselves that we want to pray, sometimes we don't make them. We want to wake up and pray, and we don't do it. So we want to see where all of this is, is, is taken as in the importance of praying, and whether God is serious about it. I want to say that prayer is God's idea. Human beings did not institute prayer. God sought to restore man and what it, he has lost in the Garden of Eden through prayer and other things. So one of the ways God sought to restore what man has lost in, from the Garden of Eden is prayer. So when um, God created Adam and Eve, he gave, them, gave us one thing, dominion. And then in Genesis, the scriptures say, in the cool of the day, God will come and fellowship with Adam and Eve. And then afterwards, we lost it. We lost that fellowship. And God came looking for Adam and Eve, and he asked them, where are you? And then he tells, he, he was hidden, he was running. So God just wants us to come back irrespective of how we may have lost it and the fact that dominion that he had given to man on earth had been given to an enemy. So a key scripture is from Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 where the scripture says that God was talking to Ezekiel and he says, I sought for a man, I sought for a man to stand in the gap, but I found none. God, please, if you have something to do, just go ahead and do it. Why are you asking for a man to do that? He also came to Abraham, and he says he was going to destroy um, Sodom and Gomorrah. And he comes to discuss with a man, and he's at, so that the man would intercede, such that he would not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But even after the intercession, I am hoping that I strongly believe that if Abraham had gone ahead to even intercede to the point of one person, maybe God would have relented from destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. Even in the book of Judges as well, when Samson was praying to God and asked that after blowing it big time, he came to God and then 
he says that, oh, let me die with these people. And God allows him. I'm believing strongly that if he had said, oh, God, please, let me kill these people and spare my life so that I go ahead and protect your people, Israel, God will still have done it. That should tell you how seriously God takes prayer and even the persistence or praying without ceasing because he's an ever ready God to listen and then answer. Now we want to see how God sought to restore man to a place of relationship and dominion with himself through prayer. So first, we are looking at scriptures like Psalm 2 verse 8, when God gave an invitation. So God gave an invitation, and it's all through the scriptures. He says, ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance. He goes ahead to, ask, to say that, so now you have not asked me for anything. Call on me, Jeremiah 33, call on me, and I'll answer. So he gives an invitation to man that ask me, call on me, besiege me. And Jesus gave several examples of how we should persist in prayer. So God in his wisdom trying to restore dominion and then restore a relationship with man which he intended in the garden that has been lost. He gives an invitation to man that we should call on him. And again, we look at Romans chapter 1, verse 17, and then you flow on to the end of the chapter, and you, you see that even those of us who have come to God through Christ Jesus, we know, have the privilege of the scriptures. But there's an interesting thing that happens with how creation is screaming unto men so that man would know God. So if you go through several um, civilizations and, and ethnic people scattered around the, the earth, it wasn't the white man that went to each one of them to tell them that there is a God somewhere. All of creation is screaming out. So Psalm 19 verse 1, 2 and 3 say, day by day they uttered forth speech. So that invitation that God has given to man to come back to him was even screamed out through creation even before Jesus came to tell us about a father that we can connect with. Even before the people of Israel had to know him through his relationship with Abraham. And so sometimes i look at how the world views about whether there's existence of god or not because before anybody decided to tell anybody there was god people found ways of reaching him several ways of reaching him so we had idol worship in in in, in among the Akans and people all over the world had ways of reaching god because he gave an invitation that invitation had come forth through scripture that invitation had come forth through the people of Israel and his connection with them. And it has come forth through creation that is screaming out to us that there is a God. I want to connect with you. Come and have a relationship with me. So their misinterpretation of God's invitation led to the worship of several other gods. But God is giving out an invitation and he is screaming it out loudly enough for peoples all around the world to know that there is a God and then connect with him. The approach may be wrong though. And then he sent Jesus. So we have the invitation and now we have the instruction how we could do it. So when Jesus came, he took time and pain to teach his people how to pray. So we have the Lord's Prayer. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come. Given us a model that we should look at and pray. And in John chapter 11, when Jesus called on Lazarus, he says, oh, I am doing this, God, not so for the sake of the people that are standing here. He was just teaching the people that this is what you should do. He himself got up early in the morning in Mark chapter 4, and then he went out to pray. It is not as though Jesus could not have had what he wanted, but he wanted to show us 
how to pray. Jesus is the one that is teaching us the way to connect with God. He himself is the connection with God. So he comes in to teach us how we should pray. So that is the instruction. There's an invitation from God the Father, and there's an instruction from God the Son, and there is inspiration from God the Holy Spirit. So we do not know what to say. We don't know how to pray like the book of Romans says, Romans chapter 8, but the Holy Spirit himself bears us in prayer. So we pray in, in things we don't understand, in agony, in moans, and in cries that we, we may not even interpret. And then we have the language of the Holy Spirit that should aid us to, to pray. So with the help of the Holy Spirit, we are able to, sometimes you walk around and you pick signals in your spirit that you should speak and pray into something that you can't even perceive or understand. And that is the Holy Spirit causing us to stand and to pray. There are times that you pray and you can't have your peace about something. And so you have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. That is the persistence that God wants us to push in prayer. So look at how our God is serious about we standing in prayer and persisting in prayer. Because he wants the earth, to, to his kingdom to come. His kingdom to come. His kingdom must come on earth. And as it stands now, where there is no church and where there is no believer to speak or legislate the, the oracles of God, I mean, it's a fuel day for the enemy where our lights are not shining, darkness will triumph. So we have prayer as a tool to help us institute the will of God on earth and in whatsoever place we find ourselves, in our communities, in our families, in, 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 in our schools, in, in our churches. I'll tell you, give you an example. There's a church I belong to. I've been a Presbyterian for the past eight years. And I haven't sought to make an impact because I felt I had been uprooted from where I had been and then replanted and still trying to find my feet. But once upon a time, I went into a meeting and people were not, the, the attendance was so low. And I received a rebuke that you have been here and you haven't taken pain to, 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 to see how best you can contribute or make an impact. So I went back home and I decided to pray casually about it. Right after the prayer, the next Sunday I received a call. They had been vetting for executive positions for that group. It is called YAF, that is Young Adult Fellowship. And I have been a casual member. But after that prayer, I, I was called and asked whether I would want to be a vice president. Vice president not contested, just come and be. We will just do yes and no over you. I didn't go through vetting, but I am just trying to say that God wants us to make impact. He wants his will to be done on earth. But we can't do it on our own because it is not by might, it's not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. And the, the, the Spirit of the Lord wants to have his way with us and use us to do what God would want to see the earth become. So that simple prayer I prayed led to a, 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 a snowballing of issues such that Finally, I am sitting here as vice president of a group that I had casually decided not to even commit to. And it was just an act of prayer and a prompting of the Holy Spirit and the fact that he wants his will to be done. And so we have another bit of the eyes that we have talked about that there is an insurance. He gives us an insurance, a blank check, a ticket that when you call, you are sure to have your answer. Jesus said, It is not you that have called me. It is me that have called you in John chapter 15 verse 16. That you would go and bear fruit. And then you can ask me for whatever you want. And I will do it. I like the tree. So God has given us, ask me and I will do all that you, you, you ask of or you, you, you can imagine. All that you ask for or you can imagine. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Whilst you are talking, I'll answer. 
while you are still speaking, while you, before you call, I'll answer. While you are still speaking, I would answer. So the Bible is, is bereft with assurances and insurance of the fact that when we pray, there are going to be answers. You are going to ask me, hold on, Mrs. Preacher. I have prayed several times and I have not gotten any answers. And I have given up. I am not talking about being naive and thinking that, oh, once you say, it's going to happen. God is not a magic wand. I mean, prayer is not a magic wand. That abracadabra, then everything you want is happening. We can make God a puppet. And remember, prayer is not our idea. It is God's idea. So he teaches us how to pray. He invites us to pray. He teaches us how to pray. And then he, he gives us all the assurance and then the instruction that we need to pray and the inspiration and the empowerment to pray. But you see how he wants us to use prayer as a tool to institute his will, restore dominion that man has lost, Re institute his will on earth. Not to just go about doing things that we like. And that would have been a very serious thing. There's a movie that is a Bruce Almighty or something. And how he's juggling somebody saying, God, let there be rain. And another person is saying, oh, I want my clothes to dry. And another person is saying, I, and I just want to say that prayer is not a magic wand. It is to, to, to push the agenda of God or to institute the will of God on earth. So there could be detractors. I mean, things that would happen that would make us feel that uh, God doesn't take prayer seriously. That is when we pray and we do not have answers. That is one of them. And for that one, we want to go to James chapter 1, where God is telling, uh, James says that we pray and we do not receive answers because we ask amiss. What is asking amiss? Asking amiss is simply asking not in the will of God. We can ask for things that can harm us. We can ask for things. So that scripture that is talking about asking amiss talks about using prayer for our selfish ambitions, for our own motives. You ask and you do not receive and you are upset because you want to ask for your own self, your own selfish ambitions so that people will see that you to you day, you to you have form. But this whole thing is not about us, but it's about God. And because it's about him and he takes it seriously, that's why he won't allow you to abuse it. And you know how human beings we are. Sometimes when we, we are up and in tune with God, things happen the way they should. But we are not in, when we are not in tune with God, we, we, we are subject to doing so much that are out of place and that are counter uh, kingdom, counter eternity, counter uh, progress, even in the sphere of, of men. So God being God, knowing all things and seeing all things, and the fact that we know in part and prophesy in part, let us not despair in times where we have prayed when we have not received answers and think that, oh, this God, he will not answer. Let me not uh, waste my time and energy on him. Last year, during the November fast, I was praying seriously for my sick mother. And during the fast, she died. 23rd November, she died. And I, I, I kept praying because I didn't have any options. If you won't pray, what else will you do for me? If you check out of God and you say you don't mind him, where, where are you going? Where, 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 where would you go? Who, who would you have an, as an assurance on earth? Because everything else is sinking sand. So let's take courage and know that God wants us to pray. He needs it. He's begging us. He's beseeching us. He wants us to pray. And he wants us to persist in prayer. Not because he wants to test us whether we are interested or not. In fact, when we are in line with God, the moment you drop it, he will do it. But sometimes we don't know. And sometimes we don't align with him. So just to say that something that involves God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and they sharing us on 
so that we will win this, this, this fight of faith and take dominion on earth for him, we need to persist. We need to persist. We need to persist. It is as though God can do anything on earth unless we pray. And he is beseeching you and I. So don't take prayer for granted. There are times it's a whisper and God has done them. There are times I've spent fasting times and nothing has happened. And it is just a matter of the fact that there should be an alignment. That we should join people. Uh, corporate prayer must happen. Sometimes you get a few people together and wonders are happening. The other times you need to find somebody who is in, in line and in faith with you to join hands and to pray. The other times you just need to connect with an altar and to pray and things will happen. And the other times you only also need, like Hannah has been praying for a child for a, whole, a, a very long time. All she needed was the prophet, who was even an old prophet that could not see much, to just say, your request will be granted and it would be granted. So let's find time to read and to know about what God is saying about prayer and then do it God's way. And when we do it God's way, we are sure to receive answers. There is no other way to find peace of mind on earth than in the place of prayer. There are times I get so worried and I get so upset and I feel like my world is crumbling down and when I enter into a time of prayer, God is just resetting. I, I say he is formatting my heart, re reformatting it and resetting me so that I come to agree and understand what he is up to. There are times I go to him, I say, God, this one, you have reduced me to nothing. I really need to break through. I really need to break through. I need to get this thing done. I need to get this thing done. Then you would be there in the place of prayer then you hear just a simple way. You have no idea. You have no idea what I'm doing this through, um, through this uh, so-called, not so glamorous, not so beautiful life that you are living now. It doesn't look like it is. It is beautiful in the eyes of the world, but it is just perfect the way it is. And it is same like Jesus. He came here on earth. He didn't look beautiful in the eyes of men. And he didn't have a, a palace to live in. He was born in a manger. But he's gone several years and we're still talking about him. And those who lived in palaces, sometimes they don't even remember them. So that is how it is. When we, we, we are so earthly and we enter into the place of prayer and we allow ourselves for God to use us, he, 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 he diffuses the tension, the strife, the, the worries, the fears, and, and resets us to, to, to move in alignment with God. In 1 Peter chapter 3, when God is instructing us through Peter that women should be submissive to their husbands, even though they may not be Christians, he talked about the fact that they should not be afraid. And if there's one thing that prayer does for us, it takes away fear. Because you know that you have handed, handed everything over to a God that is able to do all things. So if you have prayed several times and you have not received answers, don't worry. Just keep praying. Just persist in prayer. Jesus taught us to persist in prayer. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. Because when you check out, there are no other solutions anywhere. No one can give us all that there is in this life except he who made it and who made us and who knows us and who has made provision for us to connect back with him so that his kingdom will come and his will be done on earth. We want to ask ourselves, what then is prayer? Is it the ones that the young men do when you go for an all night and it appears the Holy Spirit is, 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 is moving and they go like, hey, ha, hey, ha, hey, ha, hey, ha, hey, ha, and you're sitting down and you're asking yourself, I'm not able to pray like that. So how can I pray? When I came to the university, I love to join Christian groups and I love to pray as well. So I joined the University of Ghana Christian Fellowship, their prayer wing, they call it prayer band. 
And then being Methodist, I hadn't had the Holy Spirit baptism, so I couldn't speak in tongues. Maybe I'd had the baptism, but I didn't even know what it was. And I couldn't pray like they were praying. So they will start and everybody will be flowing. I'll be standing there looking at people's faces. So if you are good and gracious enough to have uh, uh, a gracious enough prayer leader or somebody leading the prayer, they would identify that not everybody is like that. So they'll go like, oh, you can, you can keep thanking God and move along with us. But there are times if you are not there and you are not able to pray as much as that, you tell yourself, this prayer thing is not for me. There are also times when people will come and say, oh, I spent three, three hours in the presence of the Lord. I spent five hours in the presence of the Lord. And you are even trying to manage even 30 minutes or 10 minutes. You, you stand to pray and you're so short of words. Everything is finished. You don't know what else to do or how to, 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 to continue. I'll just try to take you through how I have tried to pray over the years because as much as possible, this thing is not a hard and fast rule. Prayer is simply a conversation with God. Sometimes when I used to sit in the trotro, I'll just say a simple prayer. There are times I see somebody standing by the road, it's either they are derailed or they are unwell, and it cuts my heart, and I'll just say a simple prayer, Lord, please visit this person. There are times I see a man and a child, and sometimes it looks like the child is hungry, and I, 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 I feel uncomfortable about the situation, and I just say a simple word of prayer. That there's, there are times I'm on the delivery bed, and I'm exhausted, and I don't even know what to pray, and I just say, God, please help me, and God helps. So it doesn't have to be the hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey ya. If you have that energy and you have that gifting for those realms, you can be there. I'm not going to judge anybody that wants to pray like that. I'm not here to do that. I'm only here to encourage us that God is serious about we persisting in prayer. And so if you are struggling to pray, then we can teach ourselves or learn from examples how we can continue and persist in prayer. Not giving up when we don't have the appetite and also not giving up when we don't see answers and also not giving up when we ask ourselves, so what is prayer and how do we go about it? So in Matthew chapter 6, here is Jesus and he's praying. It's a simple prayer. It's just a simple prayer. And he is talking to God and he's asking that his kingdom should come. His will be done on earth. When I wake up in the morning, it's automatic for me. I pray the Lord's prayer. First I say, thy kingdom come, and I'm singing around the house. Whether I'm in the washroom, whether I'm cooking for my children, whether I'm folding things, I'm singing it. And while I'm doing that, I'm praying for the 16 regions in Ghana. I mention each one by name, and I had to know it and their capitals. And then I speak into each one of them. Sometimes we are hoping there should be peace. But we haven't really prayed about it. But what will it take to pray about it? Just convert the fears into prayer. The things that you, you, you think that could happen. Convert them into prayer. It doesn't have to be a special vocabulary. God listens to the very simple ones like Jonah's prayer in the, in the, tomb, the, the belly of the fish. Just say a simple word, sincere prayer, sincere prayer, sincere prayer, not being pretentious with God. I once stood in a prayer place and a young man came and stood there and he's praying, God, your word says in, in Ecclesiastes chapter, I'm like, are you quoting to God or telling him how much of the scriptures that you know? But he goes and talks and talks and talks and then eventually his phone rings. And then he picks up the call. He goes like, hello. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. I'm not judging the young man. But I'm saying, was he trying to let the people around know that he knows the scriptures? Or he was sincerely talking to God? Let's us just go to God with all the sincerity. And first, I'll say, convert your fears into prayer. It's that simple. Just say it like you're having a conversation with him. I used to dread when I was called to pray in public at Sunday school. 
So after we have finished praying, they say, we'll call one of us to pray and I'll be quiet. Sometimes I have a prodding in my heart that I should pray, but I'm dreading that I may not have the right vocabulary to say and pray like everybody will say, oh, she knows how to pray. But what do you mean by you know how to pray? It is not about the vocabulary. It's about sincerity and telling God what you think is overwhelming and that he should take over. You can start off with thanksgiving. Just give thanks to God for a new day and then for your parents and for your family and for life and all those other things. It's as simple as that. And if you want to do just 20 minutes, even 10 minutes at a time, just do it. For me, I think I pray a lot more than I think I do. Just because when I meet a friend and the person shares a need, there and there, I'll pray with you. I don't hope to go and say, oh, I'll pray with you because I may forget when I stand to pray. And sometimes I may not even get the time to stand to pray. There are times I'm praying and I'll doze off. I'm not here to say that I have arrived. But I'm only here to say that we are all human beings and we all didn't get there in a day. So we start from a scratch and tell God the things that are on our hearts with all the sincerity. And to tell you the truth, the thing that would not make, one of the things that would not make our prayers answered is the fact that we hide sins in our hearts. If we had sins in our hearts, God would not hear. That was David's prayer. If I hide iniquities in my heart, you will not hear me. Let us not, let's be real with God. Let's not be pretentious like I'm saying. This whole Christian walk and journey is a lot more about us and God than it is about us and other people. We can't rule out us and other people though, but the key is us and God. He regulates us and other people. So if the us and God does not go well, the us and the other people would be affected. So as a minister, even as a drummer in your church, even as a music person, the connection with God in prayer has a big bearing on your output as a minister, even to help you preserve yourself, even to help you per persist in the word of God, even to help you to minister. But all too often, we are interested in how we stand before people and minister to them and make them see how deep we are in the word or how great we are as orators or how much charisma we have. But the root of it is in prayer. And God takes that very seriously. When we trace the Bible and look at the people that made impact, a lot of them are closest people. That is praying people. Praying people not in public alone, but praying people in their closets. This is another dimension I want to, to give us. And the more you pray in your closets, the easier it is for you when you come to join the fold. Then you'll not be running away from prayer meetings. I know of a pastor that he would call his members, oh, come and let's pray. Then he would be hiding somewhere, fidgeting with things, trying to find other things to do. And you know that the man of God is in trouble because the man of God is a man of God. And he and God should have a relationship. You can't give what you don't have. And when God was talking to to, in, 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 to Zerubbabel in Zechariah chapter 4, he was talking about that connection from instead of having the oil in a bottle and pouring on your head, the oil must now generate from the oil, o, olive tree straight. So there's a connection from the olive tree in through tubes into, in, into the, the vessel that must go and build. That is not by might and not by power. So the point I'm trying to make here is that we need to connect with God in prayer. And it doesn't have to be anything special. And we grow through the process. So like we have said, it is as simple as that. Just make a list of, of the things that you want to pray about. Sometimes we go to, for evangelism and we say that, oh, we have made converts and we need to pray for them. 
and then we, we all failed to pray for all of these people. When I started praying on my own and desiring to pray for an hour because the scripture said you could not pray with me for an hour, that is Jesus and his disciples, I made it a point to pray for an hour. And I told myself, so if I'm praying for an hour, what would I be saying at all to God? And then EYO had gone for an outreach in, 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 in a couple of schools. One of them was Ebri Girls. So I picked a list of the people that when we, we spoke to in Ebri Girls and I begin to pray for each one of them. I had a family that is having a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses in there. I take each one of them and I pray for them that they may, they may repent. These are things God wants us to do. But all too often we hope to find prayer in a certain way. But that is all there is about the prayer. Just look for a need that will establish the will of God and the kingdom of God. So as you are trying to establish yourself as somebody who persists in prayer, start from these simple, 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 simple ways. Are there any men of God in Ghana that you follow whose ministry have been a blessing to you? Pull down their names. Speak into their lives. As you have joined EYO, your president or your lead shepherds, are you praying for them? Pray for them. Nana Dodanko Akufwadu is the president. You know, people are casting pe uh, spells and people are using charms. They put on people in authority so that they will do their bidding. And we are sitting here sometimes, we spend all of our time complaining about these politicians. But we may not know what the influences they may be under. Instead of complaining, why don't you com convert the complaints into prayer? Before you realize, you are doing four hours, five hours, six hours, because there is a lot more need than there are praying people. So we can't say, oh, we don't have anything to pray about. Just take a pen and a paper, write down the things that are worrying or the things that you hope to pray about. And the Bible has given us instructions about the people we should pray for. And when you go and meet people complaining about pastors, don't join in to complain and insult the pastors. You cannot defend if they are not defensible, but you can pray for all of these people when you go and they're talking about how the church is being some way and people are not loving people in the church and people are not being nice in EYO and all that. Come and sit down and convert all of that into prayer. And let's see how God uses all of this to transform the things that we complain about. To be honest with you, if you complain to a friend and you gossip, by the time you leave, you know that your soul is aching you, your spirit has been vexed with the gossip. But if you had gone to say it all in prayer and poured it before God, you'll be edified and know that things are going to happen. And though sometimes people may not ascribe the credit to you that things have gone well because of your prayer, you know deep down in your heart that something good has happened and God has used you to establish his will and his kingdom has come in the lives of people. So we look at Jesus and want to ask ourselves, how often can we pray and when can we pray? I heard people say that it must be very early in the morning at dawn. So uh, some people do midnight prayers. I love to do midnight prayers because I feel it, it makes me feel in charge. It's like I'm riding the morning. I, 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 I am setting things in place before anybody gets up to say hello or akubadu. And, 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 and put things in the atmosphere then when I come back I'm now contending before I operate I want to operate early in the morning before when they wake up they know that oh this place is a no go area because somebody can conquer already you know but it doesn't mean that if you don't pray very early in the morning then God is not hearing our prayers pray without season that is what uh, Apostle Paul tells the church in Thessalonica Pray without season. Every now and then pray. Every now and then pray. And if sometimes you are not even able to stand or keep watch for an hour and you decide to disperse it in the course of the day. So you, you meet your boss and there's a conversation you don't like. You quickly find some space and you pray. Sometimes even in your head, you pray. You sit in front of somebody you're going to do a sales pitch and you just say a quick prayer. God help me 
you need a favor, you are standing by the road, you need a truck truck, you can just say a quick prayer, Lord, I need to go. Can you please send a vehicle? And you know, sometimes when you say that prayer and you don't even get a vehicle, you are likely to get your peace because you know that you have committed it into the hands of the Lord. When we don't persist in prayer, sometimes we live in fear because you don't know who then is in charge. But when you have persisted in prayer, you know that God is in control. Even when things don't turn the way you want them, you have your peace and the peace of the Lord that, that passes all understanding will dwell amongst you. You know, we are in very terrible times. Coronavirus came and the world was tumbling. People were looking for solutions. Some committed suicide. Some died even before they were affected. There were postulations of what will happen, the aftermath, uh, economic implication, uh, political implication, we stayed here. Some of them did not happen because we know in part and we prophesy in part. I'm sure when people were worried, God was up there. He was just looking at human beings, come to our knees and seeing that all our signs, all our knowledge, all our philosophies, they can't take us anywhere. We are human beings. In fact, with it, God was telling us that we are human beings. But the beauty of it is that those who know their law, they will stand and do exploits. And why would they do exploits? It would be in prayer that you have connected with the hand that changes things, that makes things, that fixes things in moments. And when you have done that connection, you know that, oh, I can rest assured that God is in charge. And some of us, even in the midst of the pandemic, we have seen real good breaks, especially for us as a ministry, EYO, and our secretariat, we have seen real good breaks. Some things that we have been talking about several years back, we have been able to implement them in this year. So others are saying there's a casting down, we are saying there's a lifting up. And some of them, we didn't even plan them. We didn't even do anything to institute them. We didn't even project them. It is just about the fact that when we call on him, he will hear and answer. He said, so now we have not asked for anything. So keep persisting in prayer. When Peter and John and, and the other fishermen, sons of Zebedee, had told all night and they didn't catch anything and they had come to sit to mend their nets jesus came and asked them so that they could be of help to him and when he had finished he said cast your nets and it was not even in a deep seas but somewhere that he could not even fathom that he could get a catch and then he did Oftentimes, we are asking ourselves, how would I hear the voice of God? But I tell you, in prayer, you can hear him countless times. Your, 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 your spirit connects with him and you receive inspiration and revelation in prayer. And sometimes, even when you can't even decipher that this is the voice of God, it imprints on you that this is something that I can lay rest in my heart. And though you may think it is just an impression, it may be God talking to you. It is God talking to you. So there are a lot of voices that are screaming out. The difficulty here, coronavirus, some pastors, some confused politicians, some confused theorists, some confused other human beings, some afraid people, all of them are speaking. And we live with all of these people. But we need to hear what God is saying in such times. Career goals, husbands and, and uh, spouses that we need, when to get married, what job to do, um, whether to go into ministry or whether to, 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 to go into uh, any of the seven pillars. We have discussed them not too long ago. You need to persist in prayer to find that place. I will share a testimony with you. 
I used to work with one of the telcos in Ghana. And I was on a project. In fact, I was the two IC to the consultant that had been brought from Sweden to, to, to work on the project. And I had worked on charters to regulate how we communicate with our customers. And when we say communication, we are not talking about the verbal alone, but the non-verbal as well. And we are making sure the outlook of our um, offices is communicating who we are to our customers. The USSD they have to use to assess a product is communicating who we are to our customers. Products and the pricing is also communicating to our customers. So I was the one with the, the Bible or the document, the blueprint, to make sure every bit of the organization is conforming to this charter that had been developed. And I came on leave. When I did, I saw that my boss had sent an email. He wasn't part of the project. And I think maybe he felt I was becoming too powerful in the organization. So he decided to put somebody else on the project. And I just sensed in my spirit that not all was well. And after I joined into a meeting at a new IO meeting called Catalambano, I just received in my spirit that there's a lot more to do for the kingdom of God than for me to spend my energy doing things that may happen, that may not happen, that are going to help people's pockets and you yourself, you fight unnecessarily, you may not even be rewarded adequately for that. And so whilst I went to a place of prayer, worried that I had been kicked out and, and trying to see what my next steps would be, I just heard a voice clearly, I have a project for you, a project that has eternal consequences. Give these people this one, everybody else can do it. If nobody else can do it, they wouldn't say somebody else should be on the project. So I have another project for you. And when I came to that place, it hadn't been a smooth journey, but I have not for once shudder when I think of eternity because I know that I'm in my place. I have found my place. The place that when I go to stand before God, I would not say I've wasted my life, but a place where I can say that I have fought the battle and I've run the race. So bringing my message to a close, and asking that we persist in prayer. I know a lot of us are young and we are still trying to find our place. And you find that place only in prayer because the voices we hear are a lot and the motivations are a lot. We have Facebook and we have social media where there's so much pressure and there's fake life. People want you to live up to a certain standard and once you don't live up to that standard, you are likely to feel you are inadequate. You are likely to live with a lot of insecurities. You are likely to live with pretensions in life. But when you stay in that place of prayer, you know who you are. You know who God made you to be. You know your strength. You not trade the fact that you don't have some high cheekbone and you don't have some kind of body shape to be accepted because God made you and he is not judging you by who you, 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 you are physically, but who he says you are according to his word. And you find that in that place of prayer where he's telling you what you will do that will make you fulfilled in life. So, precious one and people of God, we don't know when our Father is, our Jesus is coming. But the signs are clear. It may not be long. We need to connect. So, as the scriptures tell us in Hebrews chapter 12, let's lay aside everything, weight that sets us back. Whether it's unforgiveness, whether it's some secret sins, whether it is pride 
whether it is not giving up on our, our personal ambitions and pursue God in prayer and let's find our place. And when we have found it, he's going to be the, the, the empowerment. And without him, we can do nothing like Jesus said. So let's be branches that are connected. Stay in him. John chapter 15. And mukosu abamana. Obeye mapadiye amon. If you stay in him and do his bidding, he would also do all you ask for. Let's persist in prayer as we enter the new year. God bless us all. Amen.